But I will like to go through the process at least once, step by step, following the, process, the processes that I have. So step number one, we need to identify a variable with a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. So you guys remember the coefficient is going to be the value that's being multiplied in front of, uh, multiplied by your variable. So um, basically what we're looking for is a variable that is by itself, because that basically means that it's being multiplied by 1. Or if it was a negative, then it would be multiplied by negative 1. Does everybody follow me? Yes? OK. So you guys can see that x is my variable that has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. All right? Step number two. Solve for that variable using inverse operations. So to solve, I'm just going to kind of make a nice little side note over here so I can make sure I can apply my operations. Now the reason you could really do this for any variable, the reason why I tell you guys to you choose a variable for when it has 1 or negative 1 is because all we have to do to solve for this variable is subtract a 3y. So therefore, x equals negative 3y plus 5. Does everybody see that? Okay. If you were to solve for x here, you'd have to add 4y and then divide by negative 2. You could do it, but do you guys see how, much, how that's more steps? Yes? So I always like to solve for the variable um, that, has one, uh, that has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. Now, when I'm talking about the quantity that the variable is equal to, this is what I'm talking about. So step number three it says plug in the quantity, which is in the green, that plug in the quantity very that I should have said that, that the variable is equal to two. So the variable is equal to the green quantity. Does everybody see that? Okay. So we're going to plug in the quantity, the, the variable is equal to, into the other equation for the same variable. So we're saying x is equal to this quantity. I'm going to plug in this quantity in for x into the other equation. So the other equation is right here. I am going to replace my variable x with my new quantity. So it's going to look something like this, <coughs> negative 2. Negative th or times negative 3y plus 5 minus 4y equals 5. Does everybody see how I basically just replaced x of my other equation with the quantity that x is equal to? Yes? Now, ladies and gentlemen, we don't really use boxes. In math, when we want to replace something, we use a different mathematical symbol. Yes? Parentheses. Parentheses. So technically, ladies and gentlemen, it should look like this. Okay. We don't really I just used the green box so you guys could like visually see, oh, that goes there. But basically we're going to want to use parentheses. And the reason why parentheses are going to be helpful is because that also is going to remind us that we have to apply distributive property. Because going to the next step, it says simplify and solve for the other variable. So now we're dealing with an equation that has y. Up to this point, we were talking about x. We solve for x and we plugged x in. Now we're solving for the other variable, which is y. So when I apply the of property, I get a positive 6y minus 10 minus 4y equals 5. Again, we do not have to use properties of equality when we have like terms on the same side. I can simply just combine 6y and minus negative 4y because they're on the same side of the equation. So therefore, I'd get 2y minus 10 equals 5. And now I can just go ahead and solve. So to have 2y is equal to 15, divide by 2, divide by 2, y equals 15 over 2. Now, I'd like you guys to leave this as a fraction. If you want to convert it to a decimal, if you're on your EOC, you have a calculator available, that's great. But if you don't have a calculator available, um, a lot of fraction operations are going to be easier to go ahead and compute the correct answer. Decimals sometimes can uh, get messy. Well, fractions get messy as well. But anyways. So therefore, we solve for the variable. Now, you're going to plug the value back. So the value that y is equal to is 15 halves. So you're going to plug the value back into the equation for the same variable, use the equation for the other variable. So you guys can see that over here, I already have x solved. I now know what y is. So I'm going to plug this in for y. So when I do that, I have x equals negative 3 times what y is equal to 
plus 5. So when you multiply a whole number times a fraction, you rewrite your whole number as a fraction. This becomes a negative 45 over 2 plus 5. To add, um, add a whole number to a fraction, you have to have common denominators. So I'd multiply by 2 over 2. And what I get is x equals negative 45 over 2 plus 10 over 2. That's not the same. And that equals x equals a negative 35 over 2, which you can't simplify. Anybody have any questions? We're dealing with fractions, but that's OK. You could convert them to decimals, but I want to see fractions. So therefore, the intersection point is going to be at x and at y. So a lot of times, if they ask, we can write that as a coordinate point. And it'll look like that. Would anybody like me to do another problem quicker, but one where there's not any